Tuesday, July 7th, 2020, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, we're going to look at uh, how the bankers are making a killing from the current crisis. And I guess we can understand why they're playing along with it, right? Uh, they're not questioning anything uh, because they're benefiting from it. They've also been bailed out again. That's a subject uh, for a different video though. Uh, but uh, yeah, we all uh, know or a lot of us know that the banking system was uh, breaking down last year towards September, how they wouldn't lend to each other anymore in the repo market and the Fed had to come in and bail them out again. The Fed said it wasn't QE, but it was QE of course, their balance sheet increased. But before I look into how the bankers are making a killing from this crisis, I want to uh, reiterate again and I've done this many times, that the public need to learn about the monetary system, how money works, what money really is. And I don't think there's a better book than Murray Rothbard's book, What Has Government Done to Our Money? The Case for a 100% Gold Dollar. Uh, uh, am I saying we should have a 100% gold dollar? No, but I think this book really explains how money evolved, that money is not really something created by government or authority. It's something that happened in the market. It's something uh, developed by humans uh, through trial and error, uh, through uh, voluntary exchange. So yeah, I know many of you have looked into this book. You can get free PDFs for this book online. I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. But more importantly, tell your friends, tell your family, uh, tell anyone you know who wants to learn what's really going on to look into this book. Uh, it, it, you really need to, because until you know what the monetary system is really all about, you won't understand why the bankers are benefiting from this. Well, uh, the bankers, of course, have the monopoly over the issuance of the fiat currency along with their central banks. They're not uh, separate entities. They work all together. Uh, the central banks and the commercial banks. Uh, commercial banks actually they issue most of the currency through uh, giving people loans and they uh, put that uh, credit out of thin air in people's accounts through an entry. The central bank of course does create uh, credit entries, mostly though for treasuries and uh, governmental institutions. So there's an article a couple of days ago in the Telegraph that caught my attention and that's what I want to talk about today. It says bankers gorge on 11 billion pounds COVID debt fees. So there you go. <laughs> Anytime there are big bailouts uh, and it's ironic because in 08 and 09, there were big bailouts uh, of the bankers. It's they who benefit. They actually uh, get to uh, lend us money at interest backed by our work, uh, our tax paying to bail themselves out. It, it, it's really uh, perverse. <laughs> if people understood how the monetary system worked, I, I thought it was perverse back then in 08. And it is perverse now. So just again to explain to you what happened in 08. The banks were going bust. So what they did, they asked the government for a bailout. The government uh, issued all this debt back by us, gave that money, bailed out the bankers with that money. The bankers took uh, that largesse and started lending to us again at interest. Our own money, so to speak, from our backs. So uh, it, it's quite outrageous. I thought it was outrageous then, and that's why I started even writing my, my blog back then uh, for soundmoney.com, which I don't do anymore, but I'm doing my videos now. So let's go through this article. Uh, the boom in fees for debt bankers was last this high at this point in the year 2007. You'd think uh, the government's now, uh, that are bailing out again the system, 
they would say to the bankers, you have to pay us back all these fees. But of course they wouldn't do that because the bankers are in charge of everything, really. As Mayor Amschel Rothschild said, give me a monopoly control of the issuance of the currency and I care not who makes the laws because they're making the laws. So let's see what uh, they're up to this year, the banks. Banks have netted a $13.2 billion dollars or 11 billion pounds windfall in deal fees in Europe so far this year as the plunge in takeovers is offset by companies and countries borrowing trillions of pounds to fight the pandemic. The scramble to raise cash means bankers are enjoying higher investment banking fees than they did a year ago despite there being a dearth of lucrative merger deals. The amount of debt raised in Europe has so far this year earned banks $7.5 billion in fees, according to data provider Refinitiv. The highest paid date from bond and loan deals for the year to, to date since before the uh, 08 financial crisis. And there you go. Uh, I'm not sure what it is in the US. It's probably pretty big as well, though. Uh, JP Morgan. All, all the big Wall Street banks are benefiting from this, of course. While fees for merger and takeover deals fell 21% for the year to July 3rd, fees for debt deals rocketed as some of Europe's biggest companies, including pharmaceutical giant Bayer, aircraft manufacturer Airbus, and oil giant BP went ahead with bumper financings, of course, backed by the government. <laughs> as well uh, NU of course the two biggest deals came from Paris based luxury group <laughs> LVMH Moet Hennessy controlled by Europe's richest man Bernard Arnault after it raised 10 billion dollars while mobile operator T-Mobile US owned by Germany's Deutsche Telekom borrowed 19 billion so there you go Th those are the kind of companies that are boring on your back uh, makers of luxury goods uh, in Paris, as if we need uh, luxury goods really in these times. Last week, former Bank of England Governor uh, Mervyn King, who led the bank through the 08 crisis, told the Telegraph companies and countries could be sunk by the weight of their new loans, which could trigger a meltdown. Yeah, that, that's true. I spoke about that uh, uh, article actually, or interview he did, uh, Mervyn King. And this is what he said, and I quote him. I think banks are going to realize they will experience significant losses, not so much on the loans they've made since uh, the crisis became evident, uh, but on the pre-existing loans that look very safe when they were made, but now look a lot more dubious, he warned. So yeah, let's hope that uh, for once uh, these banks uh, go under, for their reckless behavior, their bad deals, and that we don't have to bail them out again. Uh, I mean, it would be really uh, bad if we let them do this again. But unfortunately, I think most people still haven't learned about what happened in 08, that we actually bailed the banks out so they could keep lending us at interest with our own money. Uh, I'm sure there, of course, there are a lot of people who understand that now, but we need to keep uh, exposing the banks uh, uh, and the system itself. It's the system itself uh, that allows the bankers to do this. It's the uh, fiat currency system, uh, a system that is not a free market based system that gives monopoly to the central banks and their agent banks. In the UK, it's even worse because there's only about five big banks. In other countries, there's a little bit more decentralization, but uh, uh, that's the problem. And uh, I think uh, Ben Rickert, uh, the alias uh, Twitter uh, account, uh, he describes it the best. And he, he put this up yesterday, which is interesting. Uh, and this is what he says, those who monopolize money production, i.e. central banks, become de facto currency counterfeiting operations, in turn stealing human labor indefinitely. 
At the core is a malevolent power that effectively makes them slave masters of the global population. So yeah, that's how they they control the system. That's why the less than 1% control everything. They've got most of the wealth. They've been doing this uh, monopoly game since, well, 1694, I would say, with the creation of the Bank of England in the States. It hasn't been as... Uh, smooth for the bankers uh they uh, were out of action the central bankers uh from the time of jackson andrew jackson until 1913 uh before that there were uh two central banks the first bank of the united states the second bank but jackson of course slayed uh, uh the second bank of the united states didn't uh, allow for the uh charter to be renewed i think it was 1836 or thereabouts so this is an interesting chart he put up here uh, it says monopolize money production and tax collection yet yeah, tax collection is very important use cheaply produced money to buy assets and hire soldiers it's really fiat currency because we know real money uh is is uh, something that is created in the free market and usually it's gold and silver after impo impoverishing trading partners conquer or enslave them force slaves to work in mo money production facilities violently suppress any competitors in money com production so there you go that's why uh the bankers hate gold and silver even though they need to hold on to it because they need to control it. You can only control something if you got some of that uh, uh, item, right? Uh, that's why they keep the gold and silver, not because uh, they want to use it uh, in their system, but because they want to manipulate uh, the price to keep people away from it, from learning how uh, much better of uh, money it is than fiat currency. So there you go. Uh, they're benefiting from it. So is it any wonder that the big banks, the big corporations are all buying into this crisis and all the other things that are happening now? Uh, none of them is questioning it because they're, this is where the money has been created and they're benefiting from it. So now let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. Yesterday, it was another big day for the stock market. I had a look at uh, Tesla stock price, had a look at uh, Amazon. <laughs> they look crazy though those two uh, uh stocks well well done for the the people who held on to that actually uh but um if that is not a bubble i don't know what is despite that uh the stock markets for for example on the year-to-date basis the dow is still down about eight percent s p is down about one and a half the nasdaq is uh, up 16 percent of course because of all the, the moves in the those companies i just talked about but gold uh, actually is up just a little more than the nasdaq so actually gold is outperforming the nasdaq anyway uh it's 8.26 a.m. London. Uh, right now, gold is down $1.30 at 17.82. The high has been 17.91 overnight. I'm talking about spot gold, not August futures. Uh, the low has been 17.81.50. Uh, silver, they really uh, don't want silver to go up, the bankers, uh, because silver really is uh, the ultimate money for the masses. It is the loose change, so to speak. Well, we're down 13 cents at 1812. The high's been 1838. 1840 is still big resistance. Uh, the Dow future is down 1% or 250 points, 26,038. S&P is down 23, uh, three quarters of a percent at 3155. NASDAQ 100 future is down just under half a percent or 46 points uh right now it looks like uh the markets are not based on reality they're based on drugs <laughs> they're based on the on the fed and central banking uh, injection of funny money i would say uh, when will they fall back to reality i don't know uh 
I'm just going to keep an eye from, from the outside, so to speak. Uh, the pound is down 0.2 of a percent at 124.67. The euro is down 0.2 as well. So the dollar is a little firmer and the dollar is, uh, and the dollar is up 0.2 versus the yen at 107.57. WTI crude stuck around this 40 level. We're down about a percent now uh, at 40.16. And I've noticed the, uh, the bond market, the 10-year yield is... Uh, not really going anywhere, uh, despite the fact that we've seen a big move in the stock market of late. Uh, we're still around 0.66, the 10-year yield, which is very low and is not really pointing to a strong economic recovery for now. So there you go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> until we understand as a society, as individuals in general, what money really is, we won't understand why the bankers keep... Uh, raking it in no matter what uh, well it's first it's because they control uh, the government and uh, society uh, because they control the issuance of the currency uh, second is because um, yeah uh, they use us uh, to back this largesse all these bailouts and third it's because most people don't understand it and uh, they don't ask for uh, reforms of the monetary system. When was the last time you heard a, a major politician in any political party talk about reforming the whole system, monetary banking system? Uh, I, I don't think we ever heard about that. Maybe back in the late 1800s, I guess uh, the McKinley, President McKinley, or William Jennings Bryan, the cross of gold, I think, uh, speech he made but nowadays people are completely um, oblivious they they don't understand how money works and uh, unfortunately there are uh, institutions like the Bank of England who are uh, actually helping children during the lockdown uh, with questions of money and I think that's really dangerous I think parents should uh, not fall for the trap central banks are not there to help you, uh, the general public. They're there to enrich uh, their controllers, the bankers, and the banks around them, the private, commercial, and investment banks. In the meantime, though, uh, there, are, there is a way to protect yourself, as I've said many times. Don't deal with the bankers as much as possible and take your savings out of the system. Put it in precious metals because uh, um, yeah, they're not... Uh, you're not financing them uh, by keeping it in precious metals. A any balance you keep in the bank, you're financing the bankers. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, make sure you share this video far and wide as well. And think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Parlay, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.